Hey everybody, my name is um, Eric, and today I'm going to be giving you a brief uh, primer on the Bloomberg Professional Platform, or more commonly known as the Bloomberg Terminal. Uh, if you work in finance, no doubt you know what the Bloomberg Terminal is. You probably have one at work, if you work on the street. Um, otherwise, you're probably just interested in what all the the uh, hype is about on the Bloomberg. Well, uh, Bloomberg is a terrific platform. It is probably the most in-depth platform. If you want something finance related, it's likely on Bloomberg. Uh, Bloomberg does have some competitors like uh, Refinitiv Icon, uh, but the reason why Bloomberg can command such high prices for this system, which is uh, easily over $25,000 per year for a bare bones license, and by bare bones I mean delayed quotes and uh, uh, limited access to broker research, is because uh, the quality of the information that they have and the depth of it is just, it's, it's unmatched. Um, there are just tens of thousands of different functions in this system. Uh, no way we can go through all of them, but uh, we'll take a look at a few. Uh, if you are interested in getting your hands on a Bloomberg terminal and you don't work uh, on the street or uh, your employer doesn't buy your license, uh, you can check in with local business schools or universities and see if they have Bloomberg terminals uh, at the campus. Uh, I know several universities around me have Bloomberg terminals, and those terminals are licensed to hardware, and anyone can go in there and just create an account. It just requires that you have a cell phone to receive a uh, security code through, <clears throat> a two-factor authentication. You can only use the Bloomberg from that specific you know, system or any licensed system. You can't go there and sign up and leave and come home and use it there. It's just not going to work unless you had Bloomberg anywhere, which, uh, surprise, surprise, is an extra charge service. Um, I do not pay for my own license, full disclosure. Uh, I do not think I would want to pay between 25 and 30 grand a year for this license. Uh, nonetheless, the platform is terrific, and I want to show you some of the basics. So for the purposes of today's video, we're going to be analyzing or taking a look at uh, Boeing's uh, stock. And we'll start off by going up to the command bar up here. And we'll type in either Boeing's uh, stock ticker or the company name. So if I type in BA, you'll see it auto-suggests the US equity. Alternatively, I could type in Boeing, the full name, <coughs> and click on BA US equity. And uh, you'll see that we have an Analyze Boeing menu. First stop is usually Desk for a description. And this will give you an overall, overall primer of the company, give you some information on when earnings are coming up, uh, who the management is, uh, price change information, and so forth. We head over to Ratios, you'll see some other information here. And if you're looking for financial information that's uh, very quick and dirty, Revenue and EPS will help you out. And then if you're interested in the broader industry, the aviation industry in this case, this uh, particular page has some information for you. Now if you're an equity analyst, you're probably going to be using um, the FA function, fi financial analysis. And this will give you the uh, balance sheet, income statement, and uh, statement of cash flows um, in a nice, easy to read uh, format. and. Uh, one of the great things about Bloomberg is that you can export this to uh, Excel and uh, use it in your um, in your analysis. So I'm just going to click through some of these items so you can see what they look like. And I always find segments interesting because it, it will show you a breakdown of where the company's revs are from. It's obviously 63.4% of uh, uh, Boeing's revs come from commercial airplane plane manufacturing at least in fiscal year 2016. Looks like that's come down to 41.8% as of uh, 2019. And a significant portion of their revenue comes from defense space and security. Cool. So I'm just going to click through. I, I can't click through all of these things because you see there's so many menus and sub-menus. This goes on for um, forever. Now, uh, as a trader, I, when I pull up a security here, I usually shortcut my way through um, the commands. For example, 
you'll see each of these sections has their own uh, subcommands, so to say. So for instance, let's say I wanted to get the Bloomberg quote for Boeing from the menu up here. I would just type in BA US Equity BQ. And that will give us the Bloomberg quote. And I'll see uh, all the financial information I need to know, or, tr or, or trading relevant information, I should say. Uh, I can see that the stock is down 1.43% for today. Uh, I can see what the volume's like, um, and so forth. Even give you a, it will even give you a, a time and sale um, section there. Now, one of the functions I also use a lot is CN for company news. And you can see all the relevant news for Boeing. Um, and all of these items are from today. You can see the uh, timestamps up here. And again, you can you can shortcut your way through by doing commands like I do, or you can just go through this menu. It really doesn't matter. Once you're familiar with the platform, you'll you'll understand you know what the the short commands are. We'll pull up a chart here, a bar chart, so we can take a look at Boeing's equity price, and it's, uh, it's down pretty significantly. Uh, no surprise, given the uh, um, what's going on in the world right now. We'll click through some other items as well, so you can take a look at uh, what options we have available. So we have back testing here. I personally do not use this, but uh, I'm sure there are many people who do. And I've been using Bloomberg for a while, and I have not discovered even a quarter of what the platform has to offer. I mean, it really is that in-depth. And I think you'll find that um, you'll find that quite a lot with Bloomberg users. It's that, you know, they'll tell you, I, I don't need, <laughs> I don't need most of the functions available on Bloomberg. Um, but, you know, lots of deals are made every day on the Bloomberg terminal. Um, this is how uh, lots of people at investment banks and hedge funds keep in touch with each other. You can literally go in here and send an instant messenger to, uh, you know, a hedge fund manager that's also on Bloomberg, and most of them, you know, are. I, I wouldn't recommend you do that, by the way, because, you know, you don't want to be annoying people. But while we're taking a look at equities, let's, um, let's take a look at SPLC. And the SPLC function is very interesting because it'll give us a supply chain alliance, <laughs> supply chain analysis of uh, different firms. So you can see I've just pulled up Boeing here by default. It's the equity I was looking at. So it pulls up Boeing, and we can see that Boeing suppliers include Raytheon, GE, Dassault, uh, Honeywell, of course, avionics supplier, Rolls Royce, uh, engine or jet engine manufacturer. Uh, and we can see customers. The United States of America, 39% of revenue comes from the United States of America. FedEx Corporation, UA, United Airlines, UPS, etc., etc. We'll take a look at different securities uh, under SPLC. So we'll take a look at Apple. Quanta Computer, Pegatron, Foxconn, uh, LG, Sharp. No doubt you've heard of many of these companies. And you can also see some of the biggest customers. I'll pull up Tesla here. So that seems to be a popular stock. Largest supplier is um, Panasonic. Uh, obviously they produce the batteries for Tesla vehicles. Samsung Rio Tinto. And a lot of these companies are not listed in the United States, by the way. International firms. And actually, I did not know that Hertz was a, a major customer of Tesla, so I just learned something here today. Let's see if there's any other functions we can take a look at. Uh, let's take a look at WAC. Uh, if you're interested in seeing what the weighted average cost of capital is for Tesla, or any other security, you can pull it up through this particular uh, command through the WAC. 
And again, if you want to shortcut your way through, you would just do Tesla, US, equity, WAC, not WAX. And it will take you right there. If you're wondering how I populated equity without typing the full word, if you just press F8 on your keyboard, it just types it out for you. It's a little quicker. Let's take a look at, uh, while we're still on equities, A&R. And A&R is uh, analyst recommendations. And um, this will generally get you some information on uh, where analysts are at with specific uh, companies and you can see that uh, the analysts are not fans of Tesla. So almost 38 percent of analysts that are um, on here are recommending selling Tesla. Nothing new there. Let's take a look at Apple. Apple reported earnings recently and um, you can see that 5.4 uh, these are all from today uh, China Renaissance, buy rating, Deutsche Bank, buy, Rod Hall at Goldman Sachs gives it a sell as of the first. Okay. And you can see it charts it, you know, plots it out for you here, green representing buys and of course red representing sells. And the middle is uh, holds. Um, of course we could always go to company specific news. This will give us all Apple related stuff for today. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, commodities. We'll, we'll kind of move away from equities for now. Um, there's really quite a lot you can do, but let's, let's just say I wanted to get some quotes on uh, oil and uh, other commodities. I could go to GLCO or I call it Gilco. And uh, this will quote us on WTI, Brent, copper, gold, hogs, coffee, cattle. Uh, let's actually pull up agriculture here. And let's give us some quotes. You can see lean hogs are up 4.4% today. And uh, of course, you can go through all of these different items and get information. We'll pull up feeder cattle just so you can see what it looks like. Oh, nothing comes up there. But you can plot all these things on a chart and so forth. It's happy to show you that. There you go. All right, let's go back. And uh, we'll go back one more step to energy. Of course, you know, a lot of eyes on energy lately with uh, WTI contracts for May going negative, which is, you know, unprecedented. But oil is rebounding nonetheless uh, a little bit. To 2150 for uh, 2115 for WTI. Anyway, let's talk about now that we've looked at this. Let's talk about and and I apologize by the way. I, I didn't have a written plan for how I was going to do this. I I just thought I was going to show you some of the functions I use. So if we're doing that, let's go over to EVTS. Uh, very important function. This is the events calendar. On Bloomberg and this shows you what you need to know um, uh, in particular I use this for earnings release so I'll come in here and I'll check off earnings release alternatively uh, I will just shortcut my way through to this by just typing EVTS ER and that will automatically check it off for me and I'll be able to take a look at uh, upcoming earnings uh, information so uh, let's just pick and choose one. We'll say Starwood. Starwood reported uh, this morning at 6. Uh, EPS came in at uh, 55 cents over the estimate of 50. Uh, so there's a little bit of an earnings surprise there for Starwood. And you can see it gives you information on call-in numbers if you want to join the conference call. Uh, alternatively, later on, the, the transcript will be available here if you want. But it, this will give you all the key information. Uh, that you need to know about specific earnings and you can set alerts in here and so forth but it's not limited to earnings as well you'll see dividends uh, shareholder meetings uh, and other um, key events and you can sort it by uh, you know date and, and 
can even display it by week if you really want to. Um, this this view here works for me, but you know, it's all about preference. So sort of similar to EVTS is the um, eco function, and eco is the economic calendar, and I'm on this every single day because I like to see what's coming up in terms of economic events, and you can see that we had a few today uh, that came out at 10, and this is only for the United States. So we had factory orders came out uh, 10 a.m. today, um, and uh, you'll see this interesting little uh, gauge here, or whatever you want to call it. it, looks like signal bars on a cell phone, and this shows you basically the relevance of this uh, this release. Uh, as it pertains to trading in the market. So obviously four bars indicates that you know this is really relevant and if I scroll down for example on 5-7 on Thursday we have initial jobless claims coming out which is a number that um, lots of people have been watching um, and you can even set alerts so you can see I have an alert set so that that sends me a message when it comes out changing non-farm non payrolls, etc., etc. So we'll pull up initial jobless claims just for um, the sake of taking a look at that. And we'll, we can even um, display it on a line chart. So these are initial jobless claims. Uh, obviously a huge spike since the coronavirus uh, pandemic has kind of taken over things. And we'll go back. So, probably the first function I go to every day is top, and that's the top news. So this will kind of sort out everything I need to know that's happening, um, and it also sends me an email twice a day, once at 9 a.m. It's customizable, but for me I have it to send uh, top headlines at 9, 9 p.m. and uh, also in the morning, just so I can understand what's going on in the market. And um, if you are brave enough to click on all stories, this will start um, scrolling through like mad as news stories come out. And usually right on the hour, as it is now, um, you have a lot of stories cascading through here as press releases get, you know, scheduled press releases are, are released and so forth. So I, I generally don't like this view, um, only because there's a lot going on. Um, and you always have this little scroller down here as well that gives you the latest news. And if something important comes up, it will be highlighted in red and usually will flash at the top here. Or it will stay up here for a few seconds um, if, the I guess, the Bloomberg team deems it very important news. But mostly I stay in um, top. If you go to NI, you can sort by different categories. And if you're just looking for things on Bloomberg, it's not like you have to have a master list of uh, all these functions or you'll, you're, you'll be screwed. I mean, you can just type in things like, okay, I want news. Well, Bloomberg will say, well, what kind of news do you want? You know, we have a news and research menu and so forth. So, okay, we have top news here. We have company-specific news. Remember, we spoke about that a little bit earlier. Uh, and then we have something very interesting, which actually I wasn't going to talk about, but I think is worth mentioning now that it came up, was Bloomberg Intelligence. <clears throat> Bloomberg has a team of analysts that work day and night, I suppose, updating Bloomberg Intelligence. This gives you all sorts of information on anything. I mean, let's just click through and we'll take a look. Well, let's see. We want information on computer hardware. Fine. You'll see uh, recent news headlines, but you'll also see you know things that uh, the Bloomberg team has written up. The, the analysts over at Bloomberg will um, publish a lot of different um, information here. Very granular. I gotta say, I don't, I don't use BI a lot. I should because it's very valuable, but uh, I don't. Now, let's um, take a look at WEI, which is something. Uh, any trader will be looking at throughout the day is the world equity indices. Uh, you can see the three majors are up for the day. 
Uh, if you click on the S&P 500, for example, this will kind of give you a breakdown of uh, performance on the day. We'll take a look at a table here. We can see that uh, energy up pretty considerably. And uh, industrials, not so happy today. And of course, you can you can click through these and see what uh, what companies are associated. We'll go back. And um, after hours, typically I'll be looking at WEIF, which are the futures uh, on the indices, the E-minis, and uh, you can see that they're trading up right now. I'm recording this in the evening, so the, uh, the cash markets are closed, so we're, we're now trading in futures. I'm going to click on the S&P 500 mini. And uh, just kind of showing you what uh, what's what's doing here. Cool. So something I'm also using a lot is the BTMM function, or bottom, and this is uh, Treasury and money market information. I have mine set obviously to the United States of America. Since that where that's where I'm based, and uh, this will give you information on Fed funds rates, uh, T bills, bonds, even give you indice index information, uh, repo rates, uh, and so forth. And you can see they have a little section here for economic releases. All right, let's take a look at BMAP, <coughs> which are commodity maps. I do not use BMAP um, since I don't deal in in commodities. Um, but it's very interesting nonetheless, I think it's worth showing. Uh, for example, uh, let's see, vessels. You can, you can actually uh, search for different ships and it will show you where it is uh, on the ocean or, or some, you know, wherever on the, wherever it's sailing. Now, a lot of uh, analysts take a look at this to see where shipments are going and uh, I know a lot of Tesla analysts will look and see um, where the cars are being delivered uh, on those massive car carrier ships. I, mean, I don't know any of those ships by name or type, so I, I, I wouldn't even know what to type in there, but uh, it's available. And you can scroll through, and BMAPs will show you um, oil refinery locations. It will even show you, it will even map out um, pipelines. And I've got to say, uh, let's see if we can try and pull that up here. Oh, it gives us weather layers, cyclones, droughts. And I'm learning this as you are, so like I said, I don't spend much time in BMAPs. But uh, let's say crude pipelines in North America. Check that out. Midland to Sealy system. Wow. Petrochemical pipelines. Let's take a look and see how detailed these are. Wow. Okay. And um, <coughs> I guess since we're dealing with coronavirus right now we can take a look at uh, the coronavirus case map even that's in here and that just goes to show you um, how granular the, the, the information you can get on, on Bloomberg is very interesting and maybe while I'm here I can see if I can show you some ships. Here we go. You can see tankers that are crossing the uh, the ocean here. The Shannon Star. How do you like that? Absolutely terrific. Okay, let's take a look at uh, something else. I mean, maybe not necessarily equity or, or 
or commodity relating related um, just to show you how in depth the information on Bloomberg is um, for example I could pull up fly right now and take a look at flight schedules I mean you, you wouldn't think this would be something on Bloomberg but it is so let's say I wanted to look up flights from uh, Chicago to Los Angeles I could just type I can type in the the airport code, I can just type in the city, and it will give us the flight schedule. So I can see that Southwest operates one at 9.25 to 11.50 on a 737-800. Uh, likewise, United Airlines flies the same route on a 319. Now obviously, because coronavirus is a thing, these flight schedules are, for the most part, you know, sort of limited, because airlines are not flying as much, but there you have it. So if you wanted to look up flight schedules, you could. Um, Dine, I mean, Bloomberg even has their own little, um, I don't know what you, what you would call it, their own little Yelp built in here where you can take a look at different restaurants and uh, see what uh, other Bloomberg users are rating them. Fine. You want to buy some stuff? You can head over to Posh. There is a classified section here. Um where you can buy all sorts of things. I mean, this is the Craigslist for Bloomberg users. Uh, you can either you can either look at just standard classifieds or you can look at uh, specific categories. Interesting. Okay, so I think that's going to wrap it up for now. I, I hope this sh kind of shows you how the, the platform works. Um, I may do more of these videos if there's any demand for it, but uh, overall I think that was a, a good starting point if you're uh, soon expecting to use the Bloomberg platform. You can always click up here and see what uh, related functions you can click on. So the, the Bloomberg system will, will you know, kind of guide you into uh, different sections. And, you know, a lot of times it will actually show you suggested functions here at the bottom. And I'm learning new ones every day. So FX, FA, applied yields from FX forwards. Well, let's take a look at that. I've never been to this section, but here we are. Okay, so that'll do for now. If you are interested in more videos or you have certain functions that you would like me to explore for you, uh, by all means, let me know. And uh, thanks for watching.